So uh, it's always handy to have some rope, uh, extra cordage with you when you're out in the woods. In an uncivilized vitality, we've always taken some heavy cord with us. And uh, for years, we've promoted the buddy line, which is a 24 foot piece of cord with a fixed loop in one end and then a stopper knot in the other. And today, I'm going to show you buddy line uh, 2.0, the fast rope. Okay, so the idea behind the Uncivilized Vitality uh, Buddy Line 2.0, or uh, we'll call it the Fast Rope, um, is just to have a brightly colored piece of cord, a little heavier than um, paracord. So this is about six, mil six millimeter uh, Paramax. You could go a little heavier with eight millimeter or five sixteenths, but that's a little a uh, little too much because the idea is to split the difference between. Um, a lot of tensile strength and supportability. So we're just, uh, I'm suggesting we go with the six millimeter. So, and brightly colored is another thing because these buddy lines, you keep one or two. I usually have, uh, I've been testing these out for a couple months. I found tons of uses and I usually keep two of them on me. All right, so I'm gonna pick a couple here, uh, brightly colored, and then it's good to have a locking carabiner or two carabiners with you in your camp gear anyway. So carabiner and a couple buddy lines and you can do a lot of things. Um, one of the first things that's gonna set the buddy line apart is, well, sorry, the buddy line, I'm call it the fast rope uh, until I come up with a better name for it, is just uh, 12 feet of Paramax. It's a little over 12 feet, about 12 and a half feet, and then I tie two uh, stopper knots, one in each end, and I'm just using a double overhand knot. I experimented with an Ashley stopper knot and a figure eight stopper knot and a couple others, um, but this, this is the best I've come up with so far, and I'll show you why. So we have 12 feet of cord. You can go around that. I'm sure we've got some other videos where I'm showing you can use this as a belt. You could even just throw a quick square knot or reef knot on that to hold that. That comes in handy when you're using a, um, a wool blanket as a cloak. Uh, I even have a goofy video where we did some rope suspenders with my buddy line a month or so ago. All right. So a couple other uses for the buddy line is right away going to be one I'm calling... Uh, a lark's cinch or a lark's head uh, and then we're going to cinch with it. You might have seen this knot before. You're going to take the, the folded over uh, middle of your fast rope and you're going to turn this over to make a lark's head. And I've got my, my blanket here. Maybe I want to cinch that up and lock that down uh, into this bundle. Okay. Now where can we go? How about right here? So your buddy line can be used to bundle up some gear to the outside of your bag, make a lark's head, and then as the two free ends come over, you're going to take the right hand, the free end, and you're going to pass it through the lark's head that direction, and the other free end is going to pass through the lark's head in the opposite direction. Then I'm going to cinch my lark's head down. We don't want to collapse that over into a reef knot, or just to keep it at the lark's head. Then you're going to take these two opposite free ends, and you're going to draw them through. And as that does, that's going to cinch down in an action very similar to a lot of times what we use uh, an arbor knot or a, a Canadian jam knot, or a, well, it's called an arbor, arbor knot. But sometimes we use that. Now this is this is tightened right up on that uh, lark's cinch, lark's head cinch. And I've got the rest of this. I can use this to throw over my shoulder uh, to carry my bedroll. I can lash it to my pack. I can just hang that up. And you can use this to cinch down quite a bit of things, as big around as your buddy line will go. And then to loosen that up, I'm just going to take the two strands here that cross through, just pull them apart, and it slides right open for the lark's cinch. And then it's easy enough just to deconstruct that knot and pull that back through. So the lark's head uh, is one of the knots you're going to work on memorizing right away for use with your fast rope because it's going to come in handy for a lot of things. Okay. A lot of times we're going to need uh, just a loop. So you're going to need a, a closed loop. And instead of tying the ends, I can make a large closed loop. I can fold this down to six feet and use this by making another lark's head. Push the two stopper knot ends through close that cinch head down 
maybe even collapse that over into into a reef knot. Right. Now I've got a closed loop and these are handy for so many different things. We can use these for, for instance, right here. Okay. Let's say I've got a bundle of firewood I've gathered. We'll use these three sticks just as a quick demonstration. Carrying back a load of firewood, I've got my closed loop. I'm just going to pass the knotted end through, close that loop down, and now I've made a, I've got a little carrier bundle with my closed loop. That's a good use of a closed loop. If I have need of a larger closed loop with my buddy line, I'll make a single fold over lark's head on this end. I don't know if the sunlight's getting you. I'll take the other end, slide that through. It's got a pre-tied stopper knot. Slide that down, collapse into that reef knot. And now I've got a large 12 foot closed loop. Lots of uses for closed loops. I'll show you an interesting one in a couple of seconds. So the other thing that the buddy line, uh, I decided on 12 feet for most people, is because you can turn this into an immediate uh, improvised harness. So I'm gonna tuck that in my belt. I think I have another video on the improvised harness. I'm gonna come around, tuck that through, draw that up tight, turn around, make sure you don't catch your manhood in there. Swing that around. And then, if you're reasonably svelte, uh, like I am, you can tie just enough of a square knot, which is reasonably secure with those double-ended, or with both ends, uh, with the double stopper knot. Now I grab my carabiner. I make sure that it goes down under both strands, the crossbar of the cod piece and the belt. And now I've got an improvised harness I would not recommend this as a life-saving harness. It's a, it's a field expedient or an emergency only harness. Or it helps when you're going up or down uh, very steep inclines or you're using a, a group line or heavy rope, you could use this to press it uh, into um, the rope like we've done at training camps before so you can get up and down the hill relatively safely. So a field expedient harness is one of the main ideas behind uh, the body line. Now let's say you're not as uh, young and slender as yours truly. How are you going to get that harness on? Well, I always have two buddy lines. So, one of the things we're going to do is we're going to turn that buddy line into a closed loop, like we just talked about. One of the basic skills to have with your, your buddy line 2.0 or your fast rope. So, I've got this closed loop. I'm going to take this loop and I'm going to fold that over again. So now I've got four strands um, closed loop, about a foot in length. Right? Now I can add a foot onto the length of that harness by using this, tuck those strands in, use that as the cod piece. Now my other buddy line, I'll take that, and at the base of that, I'm gonna duck through the loop, and then with a lark's head or girth hitch at this point, girth hitch right into that bundle. Run that up in the back. Come around and continue to tie your harness just as you would before. But now you've got a little more when you snug that around and come around the side, come around the back. Now you've got a little more, uh, a little more length to your line in case you need a little more space. Once again, you can rely on these stopper knots, but you would probably want to half hitch these back here just to make sure, right? Tie those off. And then, what do I do with the carabiner? There we go. And then I take the carabiner once again, and I make sure I'm catching the belt line and the crossbar on those four strands. And now I've made an improvised harness uh, size XL or a little bigger. Depending on how much more room you need you could do a single fold over of your second fast rope you could open that all the way up right so the second buddy um, fast rope buddy line 2.0 could be used in a foot long 
or you could get even more out of that if you had a little more you need a little more length in your um, improvised harness all right so there are several other uses for the body line oops I could use that let's say I am stringing up a bear bag for the evening or we need a little more length of line I can grab both of my both of my fast ropes and then I know I've got a about 24 feet of line and I'm gonna take the two ends and there are lots of different bends you can use I suggest that you just use something as simple uh, depending on the weight as a sheet bend that's a knot you should know all right just a sheet bend and now I've got uh, 24 feet of line might not run as smooth depending on how you're pulling over it. Remember, you got that knot in the middle. Right? But now your Buddy Line 2.0, you've got uh, quite a bit of line. You can use this as a ridge line. You could use this for bear bag, uh, river crossing, uh, all sorts of things. Each person in the group has two of these with them at all times, at least one uh, in their pocket or tied around as a belt or woven through their straps. Then we can improvise. We've got six people. We've got uh, 72 feet potentially of cordage. So now um, I'm going to splice in another one more use of the buddy lines. So your uh, buddy line uh, 2.0, or what I'm gonna, I think we're going to end up calling the fast rope because it's um, it's not good for spanning a lot of distance like a ridge line, but it's handy for a lot of different things. How are you going to carry that? Just wad it up and tie it. It's not because it's um, the slightly thicker Paramax from Paracord Planet, and not the Paracord. It's slightly uh, cumbersome to tie a, an infinity coil uh, like I would keep in my pocket paracord. So I keep that wrapped up so it just dispenses easily. What I've been doing is just grabbing my two stopper knot ends, folding that line in half, fold it in half again, and then I'm grabbing the end down here and throwing that over my hand. So I've made this overhand loop, two fingers through. I grab that that hank of line, pull that through tight, and now I've kind of folded that line into a neat little bundle. When I want to deploy this, I'm just going to grab the long loop and the two stopper ends, the two short loops, pull that straight apart, and in my hand I've got either the stopper knots or, or the loop I can let go, and then I'm ready to do uh, whatever it is I need to do with the uh, the cord. There's um, if you have your uh, fast rope in your pocket and you get to camp and you want to throw your pack up so it hangs over. We do not have any overhand branches. Uh, Alright, I'll show that one in a minute. But just to fasten my cord up, fold it in half, fold it in half again, grab the closed end, double bites, overhand loop, and it is off set so the, the longer end is down. Reach through, pinch those four strands, pull them through in a simple overhand knot, tighten that down. Uh, then you could even Go a little further, clip your carabiner through there, and then you can throw that on your pack, throw that on your belt. Um, I usually have my carabiner uh, on my my pack or somewhere else. So I'll just tie this bundle for my rope, fold it over, tuck it in the pocket, and then I'm ready to go. Let's see if we can find an uh, overhead branch. I can show them the next one. All right, let's say you, want, you get somewhere and you want to set your pack down, the ground's wet. Uh, you can throw your pack grab your fast rope, throw that around, around a tree, run those two ends through there, make a giant girth hitch on that tree, and then here you can fold these up on that line, this is another knot we'll want to cover, slide that stick through there, made you a little marlin spike, and then you've got a hanger for your pack. Nice set fast rope you can use that to fashion up a real quick hanger. Another way you can do it, maybe you for whatever reason don't want to hang your your pack up against a tree, get your fast rope. I'm going to fashion a closed loop from my fast rope, get my lark's head, tuck those through there. This is the sort of thing you'll have to kind of practice to get the hang of real quick. It's a quick expedient way to join two lines, collapse that into a reef knot, now I've got a closed loop. Okay. I can make a larger closed loop if I need it to be a little, uh, you know what, that branch is a little high. So we will make a longer closed loop because 
my wife's running the camera today and she loves nothing more than when I delay with these videos. So, Lark's head, dip that through there. Either the bugs are getting her or I'm saying ridiculous things. Watch, she's filming. Alright, so we're going to collapse that into a reef knot. Now I've made a very long closed loop. I can take that closed loop and I've got a branch that's a little higher than I can reach because the park uh, evidently doesn't want us climbing in the trees. And they don't put the branches low enough that I can make <laughs> YouTube videos. All right, so I've thrown this uh, loop over a branch and maybe because the branch is overhead, I don't want to just feed it through and tighten it up because I'll never be able to get my rope back down. So what I can do is I'll take this loop up a little ways about there get a stick and I don't know if you can see this from there carry in I'm going to reach between the closed loop grab the two standing ends place my spike behind that to kind of lock that into place now I've got the rest of my rope down here and I could either find another toggle and then I can run I can pull this end of the rope through my um, the uh, pull strap on my bag. Now my bag's hanging here from a slightly higher. Uh, if I need a little lower, I can reach up and just sort of slide that down so my bag is lower. Maybe I'm going to put my hammock here so I can reach it. If I have some snacks in that and I'm going to be resting for a while, I can reach up and with the stick trim that line down quite a bit to raise it up so the damn micro bears don't get into my bag. So this is another way you can uh, suspend your pack. Maybe your pack's heavy and you need to put it on that way. To get it on, shouldn't be carrying a pack that heavy. But now, once my pack is free and I gotta get my line down, pull that toggle out, drop the whole line back off the tree, fold that up, back into its handy configuration, and then my fast rope's ready to go tuck it back in my pocket and then we're back on the trail all right uh, one more climbing up a tree all right so here's another use uh, I just used this the other uh, last week on family camp we were trying to hang a uh, rope in the tree so the kids could fling themselves out into the lake and there was no way to get up these trees it was limbless all the way up so I grabbed a few um, a few lengths cord I actually used a, a blue a heavier line but the idea is the same what you're gonna want to do is take both ends of your fast rope and get a bowlin tied in each end. Somewhat large bowlin so you can slip your feet in there relatively easily. A couple different ways. And, uh, like the lark's head, the bowlin is another knot you should know. And with the stopper knot, um, this is going to help the bowlin prevent from uh, loosening up. So I've got this tied, these tied, and this is not something I'd, I'd advocate going too high without any harnesses, but if I'm going up about maybe, uh, I'm 5'10", so about six feet with your, you know, about the height, your height from the ground should be fine. So let's say we have to reach something in the tree or we're trying to rig up a, a tarp or something, you can use a couple of these cords as steps. So I'm gonna step right in that bowline. And then I've got this other one here I better step with my right foot so you can see. As I got that, I can step down on that cord, and as I step down a little bit, I can get this up high enough to put my other foot in. Well, maybe I should have lowered that a bit. So, and then as you go up the tree, and I'm using sort of a, 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 almost, a almost a friction hitch around the trunk of this tree, like a climb heist. And then once I step down in that, I get my foot up into the next rung, I can step down on this rung and get up a little higher and then with the buddy line I have I can continue to make these loops and work my way up the tree. Coming down is a little trickier but as you get up there and you're standing you can wrap the other one around and you could uh, in theory you could progress all the way up. Show them this tree here. This one over here. I mean, in theory, you could go all the way up that tree uh, if you had a large enough line with these loops, but I wouldn't suggest that. I've only ever used these to get up maybe three or four feet so I can, I can attach a higher line or 
Uh, like when we're putting the teepee up, we're dressing the teepee. We don't have a ladder out in the woods. I have to tie these little uh, rope steps between the two poles so we can get up higher to, to button it up. So you can use them in that sense to get up. I wouldn't suggest more than one or two uh, fast ropes high. You can, if we had two trees close together, you could tie the, the lines, uh, cinch them tight with the trucker's hitch between there and have the, the rungs of a ladder to go up. So there's lots of uses for the buddy line. 2.0, which we're calling the uh, the fast rope, just to differentiate between our 24 foot closed loop stopper knot end. Uh, let's see what other uses you can come up with. Leave them in the comments below, and uh, that's about it.